All right. Team. Okay. Cool. Cool. Networks. Networks are cool. Cool, cool, cool. And you know, they're everywhere, right? You know, there's the whole this social network thing, which everyone is excited about, but has existed forever, but we sort of put it online so we could harvest uh, the money out of people and stuff, you know. Um, you know. So they're, they're everywhere. You're full of them. You're sitting here full of networks, right? Your brain, all the stuff distributing the foods that you ate and will probably put you to sleep in the next hour, right? I mean, they're everywhere. Okay, so we kind of always knew that, and that's what this little bit, so I have a, just to fi you know, finish a little bit of where we were with this introduction from Tuesday, um, I'm going to talk about some example networks. We have videos which may or may not run. We'll see how they work. Um, but fun videos, you know, we we visualization of networks is hard, and I'll um, talk about that a little bit. Okay, so it's connected. All right, thing. Let's see if this thing behaves. Okay, so networks aren't new, right? They're not new. They've been around forever. We've thought about them for a long time in different ways. Um, we talked about the origin of the word. Um, that people like to talk about um, Euler. Euler uh, thinking about the bridges of Konigsberg and thinking about a, a trip. It's a very you know, geeky math thing to do, just like what, is there a way to get around all those bridges without crossing again and so on. That was a, good, you know, a nice little puzzle that Euler was fond of making up and, you know, for himself and then solving rather immediately. <laughs> um, you know, there's stories of him, like some monk who'd spent 40 years trying to get one more digit of pi and oil it comes along with some crazy series expansion involving signs and causes and gets another 20. Which is, you know, disappointing, right? So, um, anyway. So there are these, you know, p mathematical kind of stuff where people start to think about networks. Da Vinci, I, might, I probably said this, thought about blood networks and river networks being similar and trying to draw those analogies, you know. Okay, so but and, we've, and we've had graph theory, right? So this is, trace we trace it back to Euler, perhaps, as the first sort of mathematical version of thinking about what we call networks now, but it's a bit funny. Networks and graphs, surely they're the same thing, but they're not quite the way we frame them. Complex networks sort of applies to a different um, set of stuff now. Uh, so we have a social network theory. You get this literature for that going back into the 30s. Um, again, it's this asking people who they're connected to, to and so on. Um, and really, a and, and, you know, number of you have seen this, these, these words before, um, lots of data. That's really the transition, right? So late 90s, that we worked out that internet thing, right? We had DARPA and ARPA, ARPANET, four computers connected in 969. Um, that was a little seed and it took off. We got to the internet, then we put this web thing on top of it, and then we started to share uh, data in a really easy way. Um, you know, I, when I was going through my PhD, I was still at the stage where you get a little, you could get a postcard from someone that said, please send me a copy of your paper. Right, you'd, you'd have a set of these sorts of postcards, right? And you're just like, I want this, and you send it off. And I mean, this is the system, right? It <laughs> really was literally sort of a system of tubes and pipes, and you'd send physical <laughs> objects through them, right? All right, anyway, terrible. Um, that's why I try to give you PDFs. Uh, okay, so, all right, so uh, this is fantastic, but it's also a disaster if you have beautiful theories because they're usually wrong, right, when you look at real data, so. Um, so that's been a, that's, that's, th it's, a, it's a great time. The problem is the data is so much that we kind of think that's everything, right? So say all the social data we have now, Twitter and so on, very exciting, right? And there's so much to contend with. You think like, well, you know, even just managing to understand anything in that seems like a complete victory, right? And you've, you've understood humanity, right? And you've got the whole Asimov story, how to predict the behavior of people, all sorted out. But, um, you know, that Twitter itself is just some trace, some trace of all of human behavior. And okay, so more data will come, um, bigger and bigger and bigger problems for us, but it's great. We're doing the right thing. This is really um, science. So it turns out one of the big observations, and I'll, I've said this in parks, we'll, we'll say it again, is that real networks are, ver they're, they're in a sense, very rare um, if you just think of all networks in a box, right? So you take all networks of size n with m edges, just shuffle them all around and then pick one out. It'll never, I mentioned this the other day, they'll never be uh, a good example of a real one. So they're very low entropy structures. That was a, that's sort of the big first observation. Right? So we were looking in the wrong spot. Yeah? Okay. Um, classic human behavior. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, and, and something that's, that does separate, I will say, from graph theory, which is a beautiful field and lots of good things, lots of counting, mad counting of stuff, count, count, count. Like how many triangles, how many little shapes are there in my graph? 
lots of things. I mean, it's a very rich field, lots of beautiful mathematics. Is that the, the physics approaches that, and science in general, is th to try and under elucidate mechanistic mechanistic explanations. I mean, it's a very simple thing, but you need to both describe these networks so we get a handle on them, and then we want to start understanding how they come into being, how they behave. Um, <coughs> all right, so as I said, scale-free networks is sort of the big first story there. Um, it's a rich-gets-richer phenomenon, um, uh, but there are lots of other networks to think about. Uh, so string theory is the one that, uh, you know, if you, really, if you really, really don't like measuring reality, then, and you do like math, that is the place to go. You are safe. Yeah. <laughs> you can spend 10 years proving that no one will ever measure anything that could you know, <laughs> mess up your theory. OK, so very good. Well done, physics. All right, so we, and I've said we can get a little too excited about it. Uh, so there was a paper that was a, a not a paper, a uh, article in Wired a few years ago, the end of theory. No more theory. We don't need theory. We just we've got tons of data. Machine learning will just make a big matrix of which things point to which things, which is fine if you're Walmart or Amazon, that's cool, right? I mean, that's okay. We don't care why people buy the three wolves banging at the moon t-shirt and the gallon of milk stuff. I don't know if you've seen these things. They're very fun. Um, part of the collection of uh, great reviews on Amazon. You should, if you have not seen them, you should see them. Um, there's the Badonkadonk tank as well, which you can buy. I think it's like eighty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 for your own military tank, for whatever reason. You know, people who looked at this item also looked at this, this item, right? So generally speaking, that works quite well, but people are funny things. Uh, anyway, um, so Amazon doesn't really care, right? They don't really care. They just, they have a s an algorithm that pretty simple that says if you bought this thing and then you bought this thing, you bought this thing, we'll just put those beans into some big bean counting matrix and we'll, you know, start to front those number, what's that? And they count beans, and you know, some machines count beans, and they make lots of machines, and you know, you don't look at it after a while, but it works, and that's pretty good, and you tune it, and so on. Okay, uh, so we got a little excited here. Um, so no more theory. You know, this is really not right, right? So we want to describe things absolutely, and that's the bean counting stuff, really good. But then we want to understand why it comes into being. If we're scientists, if we want to make tons of money, maybe not. Okay, and that's really th these characters here. There's un unreasonable effectiveness of data. There's uh, some people at Google as I recall, um, this, this little line, unreasonable effectiveness of X, is, has been around since uh, uh, this, this paper by Vigno, which was a philosophical kind of piece. Why does math describe anything kind of thing, right? All right, we're not going to go into that. But that's a, it's a good question, which you can get upset about, and then you can stop thinking about it and go back to having math successfully do things for you. <laughs> um, counting. Counting's pretty, counting's a big deal, right? Okay, so um, so as I said, description, big deal, and you know the great thing now is we can describe a lot more, right? That is really really exciting, right? We're not just saying, oh, I think people do this. Well, you know, you can actually go and look. You know, so fields are changing. So economics is very very slowly changing itself <laughs> to um, recognize uh, reality. Um, you know, <laughs> lots of other fields are doing that, and, and other fields are just simply being so sort of political science. Tons of data. You know, who voted in which way. Just and, and you know you can't. You, you need to still do these things where you go and ask people what they do and so on. That's fine. You need to do that, but there's this all this extra um, material that we can get at. All right, fine. Okay, so I'm going to give you some very again nothing out of control here. Uh, just some simple, uh, you know, just the base definitions we'll use over and over. Um, in math, we tend to use vertices and edges and. We write G for a graph and stuff like that. We're, the physicists are messy people, and they get things done, and someone, you know, a mathematician 40 years later will prove it as being okay, right? So that's sort of how it works, yeah. Um, and the physicists are like, thank you. Um, <laughs> they do horrible things. All right, so we'll say nodes. Nodes is a little more yeah, um, plain spoken. Uh, so, but that could be anything, of course, people, forks in rivers, right? So where two uh, streams uh, have a junction or in, in blood networks how proteins interact. I'm going to give you some sort of ba very overall raw taxonomy, I suppose, of, of networks uh, that I've had sitting around for a while. Uh, you know, web pages, how they interact, if you think of the big graph of, of the web. Uh, organisms, yeah. food webs, who eats whom, right? Yeah, so that's a great data problem, right? How do you remote sense? I mean, we're basically talking about remote sensing is the big deal. How do you remote sense uh, who eats who, whom in, a, in an ecosystem? And we have some crazy things where we put some little traces in and we can see that this, you know, this guy went through a piranha and the piranha went through a such and such. And yeah, 
a little bit. But it's hard, it's hard to get that, you know, that really big amount of data. Like we can do it now with satellites. We can take pictures of landscapes and get out things like where all the trees are. And of course, the NSA is doing all sorts of hard, solid work to find out what all the people are doing, right? And we, you know, and we can because we're like, hi, tweet. You know. So uh, animals don't tweet. I just ate a, um, a, an excellent skunk. Obviously, we should add that to them. Yeah, all right. OK, uh, so nodes and links, all right? Um, yeah, Barabasi's book is Link, so there you go. Uh, they're going to be the connections. They can be certainly real, fixed, you know, wires, actual real links. Uh, they might be dynamic ones, and so I'll show you some nice videos of airline routes, right? This is really, you know, we've, we've developed the whole airline system, and, and of course, you can now simply just look at it. You know, it is there are the continents and the way they're laid out and where cities are, and there's a history of development. It's just that's the platform, right? You can make up a little grid and have people kind of interacting on that, and that's fun, but this is... This is the, the world, right? This is how things might spread on our planet. All right. Uh, they can be abstract ones with physical impact, is what I'm going to say. So Google, for example, starts, you know, it works when it appears in 97 or 98. And you're like, oh my god, this is fantastic, you know. So it gets more traffic, and then they have to pay people to, you know, just deploy machines, right? People who unpack boxes and put machines, in, right? It really. And of course, it's gone on and on and on. And now, with these enormous server farms, possibly destroying the Earth. <laughs> um, OK, so they can have that kind of impact, right? So they're, they're abstract in a sense. But you add links, and that, that matters later on. There's a cost, right? The, the either the website explodes, or people start to pay more money somewhere. But they could be abstract in a pure way. So connections, you know, I don't think they necessarily have a monetary, physical kind of impact later on. But so you. So concepts, for example, semantic connections, um, thesauruses, right, those sorts of things. Um, all right, so I'll have some examples of these. Uh, certainly, in a, in the they can be certainly directed or undirected, and you know, an amazing amount of work had to go into figuring out just undirected networks. Uh, and then, of course, they can be binary, they can be weighted, right? You have very naturally have weighted networks, like how strong your friendship is or what color that friendship is and so on. Um, you know, money moving between organizations and countries, yes. Can you use the word links that you can sort of edges? I, I, I'm just, I guess it's just that, yeah, the physicists got excited and they started to use their words. And they wanted, you know, the mathematicians are a little more, you know, elite and stuffy or something, and we're not going to use those. Uh, I, I, I mean, edge is a good word, but... I don't know. I mean, edge can be also, you know, it's it's a bit it's a bit ambiguous, right? It's the edge of something. That's a bit funny as well. A link really is really connotes more of that. What it, what it is, I think. I don't know. Uh, vertices is a little too much. You know. <laughs> it's a bit pretentious. All right, they can be binary weighted. Turns out this is very hard. This took many years for us to start to, you know. Um, come up with measures and so on that would, would tackle these guys. And indeed, what happened mostly for a long time is people would take dynamic networks, collapse them, and pretend that all of these interactions had kind of happened at the same time, and make them all um, undirected and make them all binary, ones or, you know, on or off. And they were fun networks to look at, right? So, but, uh, of course, they're temporal. So, we'll get to that. So it turns out uh, a big piece that was sitting around forever, and people you know, quantified this thing, uh, wrote it down for pure random networks and thought about it, but it really is sort of the elephant in the room is, is the uh, so-called degree distribution, and the first part of that is just no degree. So we just will use the word no degree. Uh, so it's the number of links that a node has around it. Now that's then complicated by whether they have weights and so on, and whether they're directed and undirected. So you, you know, a nice first step is to say how many directed edges are coming out, how many indirected ones are coming out, and how many undirected ones. That might, uh, you know, you have to think about what your network is, but that's that's very normal. Um, but then weights as well, hard. What do you call a degree when it's weighted? You kind of have to add up the weights maybe, but you also want to know how many things they're interacting with. So some of the methods we use for just um, undirected binary networks fall away a little. Okay, so if it's just uh, the number of friends you have, regardless of their strength, then it can be you can have zero friends, which is a bit sad, um, one, two, and so on. Uh, and then we talk about the average degree of a network. So these are just really big pieces, right? The average degree, and then really the dis distribution of the, the, the um, degrees of a network govern a lot about whether things spread 
you know, the chance that it will be have a have a giant component, for example, and right, which is that there's a big clump of them that are all connected together in some way. We'll get get to that. Um, you'll see in the literature because physicists like to. It's kind of cool to have these things, so they put um, this. I like this. Uh, sometimes, for some reason, uh, the average degree will be z, but typically k is the is the notation used. K sub i, i is a node, right? So when you're reading through papers, this is generally what you see. And of course, there are an unreal number of papers to read through now, so don't try it. Um, okay, so uh, very simple relationship. So if we have m edges or m links, then each link is connected to a node on both ends. So there are that's if you think about the degrees of those nodes, you're getting a plus one here and a plus one here. So you get two times the number of uh, links, um, give you the number of uh, little bits of degrees there. So if we multiply um, these pieces together divided by the number of nodes, then we get the average degree. Okay, so this is a simple sample connection. Right. Yes. Um, for counting links. I said edges. Yeah, well, then you have the average in degree and the average out degree is what you talk about there. That's right. And then the so then it will be yeah. just the number of, because there's only one end, it'll be the, n the number of directed, yeah. And then for undirected, though, like how, how do you go about counting links for in an undirected? Oh. Well, it depends how you store your data, but I mean, it's basically, yeah, you just. Okay. Uh, well, okay, I'll show you a th a thing in a second. All right. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Uh, right. So directed networks, it's got they have to be the same. They have to match up. Okay. M divided by N. All right. And, you know, I do different things here, but the, the we will talk about that's, that's another useful piece. Maybe I'll make that color graphic. Uh, the neighborhood of a, of a node, right? So in a lot of networks, if you get out to three steps away from a node, so you have a node that has its friends, and then the friends of friends, so that's two steps away. Friends of friends of friends is three. That's really kind of the edge of the, the influence that you can have in social networks, and we talked about this in Pox. That's, that's sort of the horizon of your universe in a network. Um, and uh, you know, once you get out, if you have someone who's four or five or six steps away from you, they're pretty random, right? There are a lot of people out there, and they're pretty random. Right. If you compare them to a randomly chosen person, th they won't be so far away from, from them. But your friends are different to random people. Typically. Okay. If you're special people. Okay, so we're in an adjacency matrix, which is a very easy way to store things. Um, huge matrices are usually sparse. A huge networks are really, uh, complex networks are usually sparse. So there's usually a ton of zeros in here, and you use nice methods to store sparse matrices. Um, you can also just record the links. That's also just a nice thing to do, right? Just don't. But there are some linear algebra things that you might want to do now and then, which are totally fun, and it's linear algebra, matrixology, um, which is cool. So, so it's nice to have it in this way. So this is very simple. It just says, uh, so node um, 1 is connected to 2, 3, and 4, right? So it's indexed across here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or it could be you know, A, B, C, D, E labels whatever the labels are. Uh, so this says that node, the second node is connected to the third one and the fifth one, and these are directed edges. So depending on how you want to play around with the, the data, um, you know, you might have, let's say we just have a little network um, and node, uh, let's, let's make it, you know, this is a t trivial little network, it's just this, right? right? A, B, and C. Uh, so this is, this will be directed if it's like this, and we might, depending on how we, you know, play around with things. If you do this, then that's a. You, you kind of have to just say it's a directed network, and this just might be useful for calculations, to have it symmetric. Right. Um, so counting the number of edges then is just what's in the upper triangle. But you have to say what you, how you've defined. Right. This, in a sense, kind of you could think of as having. Right, because you've symmetrized the thing, it means that their edges are going both ways. Mm -hmm. So if it's a huge thing with just a few ones, but it's symmetric, you could think of it as being kind of like this. But you just count the ones above the diagonal. Okay. Yeah. Or you, you know, simply count all the ones and divide by two. Yeah. 
right? It's each w each one here represents an in part of a yeah. So so the switch between you have to be careful with this. And in fact, we move away from matrices for random networks. We did do this. It was kind of cumbersome. We have some papers on this, but uh, we moved away more to a probabilistic description. So if you're a node of degree seven, here's the probability that you are connected to nodes of degree eight on an out edge and you know, an in edge from one called Barney, right? You have all these different kind of, you, you, you write down a probability um, function. So you step away kind of from this picture. Um, okay, sparse matrices. All right, so, okay, complex, you know, what are these things? So they, they're usually, right, they're, they're large, they're sparse, uh, which is means not many edges relatively. Um, I mean, they, there are some, some things where there are a lot of edges, but generally speaking, that's true. Uh, there's usually a dynamic element in, in some evolution, so that's, that's very complicating. As I said, analytically, we are still really getting to those things. Um, and, you know, they can be all sorts of things, right? Networks are all over the place. We are in them, we are part of them. Um, yeah, good, good. All right, so, yeah, it's, it's a great framing, good words everywhere. It's not like we've made up some funny little thing and, you know, now we're just playing games with them. Um, this is super real. All right. All right, good. Okay, so I was, you know, this little taxonomy that I have, uh, let's have, let's, let's uh, move through this. And I have a few little videos I tried to insert. We'll see how they fair. Uh, river networks, neural networks. So these are physical ones, right? They're real links. You can go and look at them and poke them and do things to them, right? And measure them and so on. Blood networks, the internet, not the web, but the internet. There's a hard, you know, a example of how these things are hard to render, especially if you project it onto a screen like this. Uh, this is a, so lots of beautiful things in river networks. I did my PhD on this stuff and we're going to talk about branching networks um, more generally. So there's, uh, you know, there's a very evident, beautiful fractal structure here. Leaves are more complicated in that there's a lot of looping and so on and it gives them an extra kind of layer of resilience you can you know cut out the middle part here and the thing will still function right the a order if you like um, so they have lots of interesting pieces and, and people are still absolutely working on this there are papers coming out all the time about um, leaf patterns so that's a lot of good fun uh, road networks very interesting you know you can look at what's actually being laid out if it was planned or not you know you maybe europe is a good example where things weren't always you know they evolved they weren't always planned right and then you have you look at say the U the west of the u.s and just gigantic grid structures and it's like okay that's not very natural looking but um you know old parts of cities versus new parts of cities um <coughs> you know lower manhattan who knows where anything is and uh, you know up above houston you're like okay um, okay, power grids, you know, one of the great examples that we have to contend with now of complex systems. You know, we have a nice enterprise here at uh, UVM on, s on the smart grid stuff because uh, we need to build an immune system, right? We've made a nice big network and that was good because it's nice to have lights and we didn't have them for a while today, but that was, you know, upsetting. Uh, so we need to, we figured out we need to kind of build some clever thing on top of it which can respond and, right, uh, you know, that system, what happened was you had nicely designed local ones, right? And then they're connected for various reasons, business and all sorts of things and some money and so on. So different things. It's not designed from the ground up. I mean, if you'd built one for the US from the beginning, it would be different. Uh, and it gives rise to some surprising outcomes, right? Uh, and um, the, the motives for the individual stations are to just get off, right? So if things are bad, they just pull themselves off. So that's a, they're selfish. They're behaving selfishly, um, and then, but that can have cascading effects. If everyone starts pulling off, someone's like, boom, you know, they're, they're not watching, essentially. Uh, so you need more coordination, so that's more of an immune system type. You know, the analogy of immune system is, is quite reasonable. Um, okay, and so for physical ones, we have distribution ones and redistribution ones, and I mentioned these the other day. Two broad categories. All right. Okay, this is, this should, this may work. Oh, good. It even has music. How about that? Yay! The music is really unnecessary. Uh, so you can, there this is part of a longer, a longer bit of footage, but it's just simply looking at um, plane flights, right? So you can see the US lighting up as the day goes through. Um, this is from a few years ago. And, um, <coughs> you know, if you put back, yeah, right. 
which I'm going to or something. Yes. Right. Oh, maybe the Caribbean a little bit. Right. Okay. Let's. Uh, yeah. This is another one. So this is uh, this is about. 2,500 flights, is it? Something like that. This is from Brockman. I'll show some more stuff. Um, this is not, so this is not in time properly. It's just like, boom, you know, these are where they all go. But it gives you, you know, it's a pretty messy looking network. Bit of a hairball. So I'll show you a couple of things attached to this about how, we just talked about this in the reading group yesterday, um, paper that came out in Science. A couple of people called Dirk, they're both called Dirk, um, about a uh, yeah, very simple way of thinking about this, actually. So um, you can figure out, based on where diseases appear, f just from the, f the plane uh, system, you can, I mean, ca you can figure. Th that's the claim, and this it's a pretty good paper, um, of where, where it started, based on the shortest paths from, uh, you know, was it Mexico City, was it, you know, somewhere in Australia, right, uh, you, c you can see. So, all right, I'll, I'll show you some, some, um, both some video and some pictures that we'll, we'll, we'll get at that in a bit, so I'll stop blathering about that. Uh, the blogosphere, which still exists, I suppose, by these are now interaction networks. This is a bit of a different thing, right? So they're not physically laid down. There's interactions that may go up and down. Um, the, the, the flight network is a good one, right? They're not, it's not actually a big tube where people are kind of <laughs> running around. It can change and, and uh, it's flexible. It has a so very different properties. Uh, the flight network, uh, by the way, is an is interesting uh, attempt to create um, an all-to-all -all network, right? So ideally, you'd be able to get in a plane and fly to wherever you wanted, one big flight, right? That'd be great. Um, so that, but the hub structure allows that to be a pretty good approximation with m you know many many fewer flights right so if, if you want to have every place connected and there are n places that's n choose two flights right so it's n squared it's n times n minus one divided by two it's n squared over two it's very big it's a large number um so we'd have a flight from burlington hawaii or whatever right It'd be really silly uh but the hub thing uh, takes out almost all of those connections and you can get to most places within you know three hops which is Pretty cool. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's a necessity aspect there, right? Money um, that forced that. And evolution is you know, up against these sort of things. So it's costly to have all sorts of connections. Uh, in some cases, it's encumbering, right? You don't want um, everyone talking to everyone at the same time. That doesn't work, right? And we know that's, you know, the military, for example, has tried to figure this out. The, the army started to get all these chest top computers and things. And, and uh, then uh, what are we going to do, right? Like, do we let everyone talk to everyone at the same time, or do we? How do we? How do we structure it so this thing can function? You know, we have everyone turned off. I mean, you know, okay. Um, <coughs> okay. So uh, lots of things. There's the gene protein networks, which you know, we continue to get better and better data about those things. Who eats whom? Um, ally networks. We've had this. AT and T has had their call network has been a thing that people have studied for a long time. There've been mathematicians at a AT and T and physicists and so on working for. Many, many years. Um, the media is an interesting um, interaction network. Very complicated thing, right? Now, of course, Twitter and so on. I mean, you have all this stuff, people following each other and repeating each other. And okay, so um, this is a little kind of interaction network. It's a physical one. This is a bit of a much longer, it's a TED talk. Come on, thing. Do you think it has to load all the way up and then start? That would be silly, right? But is it trying to search for it? Because I, I just want this little bit. Yeah, yeah, I so I don't know if you, so, bike pl so Montreal has this, New York's just started this, lots of places have these things where you, you pay a little bit of money um, or you have an account and you take your bike and there's a bike rack and you take the bike and you ride off to another place and leave it in the another bike rack. So yeah, just right. And they've started them years ago and they all got stolen, you know, like, that, right? I mean, I I think 15 years ago, there have been various attempts to do this, and they all get destroyed and stolen. Um, humans, I guess, have evolved enough to, <laughs> to be trusted. Okay. At moment, <laughs> Can 
Can you hear that? Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm going to, you be quiet. So, um, it's a TED talk. You can look at the rest of it. Uh, yeah, so Hyde Park is here. So people are, you know, having a nice time. These are tourists mostly. I was, had the uh, fortune to um, ride around there in the rain um, vigorously recently. Um, cold rain, which is good London sort of thing. Uh, Try and go as fast as I could. But um, it's a, uh, yeah, so, so they put little traces on, right, just to allow it to start to see some structure. And so you can see, what he was trying to say is you can see people commuting and so on. So these are, these are nice visualizations. It's in two dimensions. It's not out of control, right? I mean, you know, if you try to do this with gene protein interactions, it'll be just horrible, hebel. But um, uh, anyway, so that's, a, that's fun. You can look at that. This is, uh, I'm throwing in a few little examples as we go along. This is a paper that I've talked about with some of you before. This is um, from Science a few years ago. Um, Cesar Hidalgo, who's now at the Media Lab at MIT. Uh, very nice thing. They just looked at, uh, in a sense, the vector of um, products that, that countries produce and then try to match them up against each other and look at them, how they've evolved over time, right? So, uh, it's so, th so this is kind of resulting, this is a messy thing they're trying to reveal. There's all sorts of um, somewhat naughty little things they've done to kind of get it into two dimensions. But, you know, the idea is that these, these kinds of industries are ad adjacent to each other. So typically, if you're tropical agriculture, you have bananas and pineapples and so on, um, fishing is probably something else that you might produce. That's the idea, this adjacency here. Um, but it's further away from mining, right, for example, which is over here. And, um, you know, and electronics is down in, in this section, and vehicles are here. There's a big core in the middle. And so you have, you know, if you look around the world, you have countries that are on the periphery here. They haven't moved into the middle. So there's a, and the, and the claim is that there you can see the evolution of, of cultures. Right, and it's, you don't see places jumping, right? They don't suddenly produce, I mean, a little bit, but not, you know, they don't suddenly jump right into the middle of it. Uh, anyway, so a nice, uh, you know, it's a, it's a you know, very nice piece of work, this one. All right, so that's a you know, great kind of interaction network. Um, this one you guys have seen. So this is, uh, snogging means kissing, okay. Uh, so this, this is, if you can see this, this is a, uh, picture it's a it's pink and blue so it's for girls and boys it's from a high school um in the midwest i think unnamed so peter bamman was he's at columbia well i was there for a few years very a great guy does all sorts of interesting things it's a really nice piece on dorman and um he has a book called dorman uh, in in uh, new york city because the dorman like getting a job as a dorman there's no advertising ever people just become dorman you know and it's this really interesting referral process and and uh, yeah, it's really kind of cool. Um, so he's done lots of things, but um, uh, actually vows of um, chastity, that stuff, right? Uh, Texas kind of thing. Um, whether they do or don't work, tend to find they didn't work. Um, there was a delay, but it was more dangerous and so on. So I mean, he's, and so you know, a lot he's a sociologist and he's a lot of interesting things. Anyway, so this is, a, this is a cumulative network. So the problem with this is you look at it and you think, wow, you know, you put a disease in here and it's going to spread, right? But this is uh, over some period of time, six months or a year. So there's some sequential uh, history to this thing. And we want one of our visualizations of, of uh, how things uh, were carried out. Um, so there are actually numbers on hi under here. You can't see this. So here's, a <laughs> you know, here's what... Uh, Traditionally, the world wants, I suppose, that this is sort of the, well, not all cultures, but this is, um, you know, just a one pair uh, that's stable, I suppose. Um, anyway, there are a whole bunch of those. There's a larger number here. Um, you can't see it. Anyway, interesting piece of work from a few years ago. Uh, so these are interaction networks. Now we're just at social networks. Um, lots of different things. Boards and directors are an interesting uh, bipartite. This is a great example of a bi bipartite affiliation um, network. So you're on a board. Um, and maybe you're on an, you know, another board over here, and then that starts to connect you with other people, and then those people are on other boards. So, you know, McDonald's, you go from McDonald's to such and such to such and such to the, you know, the, um, the president's cabinet or something like that. I mean, there's some kind of interesting uh, 
structure there. So we'll talk about those later on. These are really interesting, there's nice math involved, but they're really fundamental kinds of structures. Uh, these affiliation networks, I'll mention some more examples, but we'll really get into them a little. That's some work I'm going to add to this, actually. Uh, yeah, well, there's, there's some, uh, there are people, say, and then some venues up here, some way that they interact, and from that you get a network, right? So you don't want to throw away all the structure. From that you get a social network. It's, it's much the better way to think about how people interact, right? They're in context, right? You're in a classroom here. Maybe, you know, you have a religion. You go to a church or whatever it is. You go to some venue like that. Sports, um, you know, maybe you play Halo with a bunch of people. You know, like there, there are re the people brought together in these different contexts. Um, <coughs> and they're usually somewhat small groups. All right. Actually, when I, you know, I've edited these slides for years, right? So they used I used to have MySpace here for, um, was MySpace and <laughs> Facebook. Uh, so, uh, and this is funny because I ha have had this for a while. I mean, we're remotely sensing this, this data, right? And so it always felt a little bit bad. Email is very tricky because you can't get that data usually. Uh, we did have a big data set at Columbia, uh, but it was all anonymized, right? So it was scrambled and all of the content was gone. The Enron data set is out there. You can get that one because Enron was very bad. So um, all of their email is just in a nice big package and people can go and analyze that, um, all the things they said. Yeah. So if you do things bad collectively as an organization, then all your stuff gets out there. Um, <coughs> uh, so, but, yeah, but that's been harder. So Facebook, of course, is closed. That's harder. Facebook has its own data team that does a lot of stuff. Uh, if you become friends with them, you can go and visit and p you know, come away with a graph. You're not allowed to bring data away. You're allowed to take your graph away. Um, just the way they started. I mean, Facebook's big draw was that it was closed, that it was clubby, that it was Harvard, and then it was colleges. And then, my God, high school people and parents. It was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> right all along, that kind of uh, has, has been painful. Yeah. yeah. They wanted to be Twitter as well. They realized that Twitter was this. Uh, they wanted an aspect of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. I was working yes, which you can. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Lara Adamic, I mentioned, she's been there. Um, yeah, and and certainly there are people in academia who end up in these places. They stay there. Yeah. Um, yeah, Facebook. That's just its origin, and they're they're nice. Uh, they're not visualizations, but I guess little uh, things you can kind of click through to show how their privacy <laughs> changed over time, and it, yeah, you know. I mean, it's, it's basically a sociopathic entity. <laughs> I mean, really, as, a, as an, or I mean, right? I mean, as, as an organization, it's not a very, you know, friendly thing. So, um, but of course, li living on social goodness, right? That is, that, is the abs that is the bedrock of their thing, is that people talk to each other and share things. But they don't want to share things. <laughs> um, Twitter is insane, right? It's just a disaster, but it's great, right? Because it's just open. So we'll see what happens. They have this ridiculous IPO recently, so uh, things may change for them. But you know, they're they're big, the, the good. So they've profited a lot from the fact that they're they're purely open. You you can have a closed account, but you know, the default is to be open. That's why people go for it. Um, you know, I don't know Snapchat and whatever's come after that will, you know, may rule the earth. I don't know, but. Uh, you know, Twitter has this nice aspect of being embeddable and, you know, all sorts of quotes come from Twitter, you know, celebrities, sports people, you know, we couldn't talk to them, but they tweeted this, you know, and they put it in the, I mean, you can't help it, you, the, you know, the journalists use it and you, know, you look at uh, political stuff, like what people are saying on Twitter, doesn't really help necessarily, but, um, but, but those things are being talked about and quantified and, and you know, and, we're, and of course we have found that, um, we and, and many other people have found all sorts of correlations between what happens on Twitter and, and, and other sorts of measures. I mean, just mentions of food, food types, correlates with uh, obesity, for example. Obesity, if you look across the states, it's a very nice piece of work. Um, you know, just a ridiculous thing, right? So we have this thing where we say, if it's a hamburger, it's this many calories. If you say hamburger, we'll turn into a calorie count. If you say hot dog, we'll do this, you know. Uh, a mandarin is this, right? And then in a sort of insane way, but then you, you, you know, taken as a whole, it works out. 
There are lots of things about whether tr you know, Twitter predicts the stock market or voting and so on. So that's, that's actually much more, I, I'm not sure if any of that works at all, but um, it's a good way to start up a Wall Street um, company, which may not you know, probably last, but it's a good way to get it going. All right, all right, so lots of things. Um, so yeah, there's some coughing here because this is, um, I mean, this is, you know, I, I built these things before the NSA became the NSA. All right. Okay, so uh, we had this little example from Brockman of the, uh, the, the spinning globe with all of the things, right? So this is built on that data set. And this is uh, some examples of, of the kind of complexities that you would see if you just look at a map of where bad things have gone, right? So this is a simulation. Uh, so it's a disease spreading from Hong Kong. And, you know, th 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 and the dots are colored for the times that they you know, took and so on, and maybe different areas. Uh, and so it's everywhere, right? This, this is bad. I think New Zealand escaped in this case, so you should. <laughs> New Zealand is, if you really, you know, you want to get out of the world and be, live in a great place. And New Zealand. New Zealand. Is Madagascar? Okay? Oh, Madagascar. No, <laughs> not good. It's true. I was looking at this before, and I thought, maybe New Zealand, maybe Madagascar. I'm like, no, bad. Um, there are some incredibly, there's some amazingly remote islands down here. That, uh, yeah, there's another set. There's r I can't remember their names off. They're very, very remote. <laughs> it's not the, no, it's further down. Amazingly remote, yeah. Um, with humans. Uh, okay, so, you know, so this is a bit of a mess, these things, and you're trying to think about where this might have started. And I'm just going to go through this quickly, but the idea is, you know, you throw away the map and then just look at these airline connections. And this is, this is uh, the effective distance and the time for infection here. So this is the distance along the network, not you know, necessarily on the globe, but, but it's not going to be far off that. But basically how many, you know, so you take the shortest route by planes, and that's your distance, fair enough. I mean, you could also do it by, you could turn that into a time thing. Uh, and then these are, this are Hong Kong is in the middle, and then all of these guys are, because it's the, sh now it's a network, it's a branching network. So you, you say, you put Hong Kong, and then we'll put the, spreading out from that, we'll put uh, the cities that are closest to it, and then the cities that are reached as you go, uh, you have to go through them to get to the other ones. Uh, and then we'll keep going, keep going, right? So these will be cities on the other side of the earth. And so these are short time, so this is, uh, again, a simulation, 11 days, 50 days, the days probably don't matter. But you can see it moving out through, the very naturally, very simply through this network. So if you, if you orient yourself properly in the network, which is a big ball, right? So you, get, you go and sit on the right place and then ignore all the cross connections, but just think of the connections going out from you. So now it's just a purely branching kind of structure. Then, um, then it, you know, the whole thing is made much simpler. So it's an idea that's been around for a long time. They did it beautifully. Um, you know, and this is, this is the spreading from Hong Kong here. You can see it's getting into Asia. Uh, Europe's got a little bit, Australia's just, boop, gone. Um, no one lives in the middle, basically, so this is, Australia's out. New Zealand, not so good here. Yeah, bad. Uh, and then the U.S. is getting it pretty bad now. I guess South America, not so bad, all right. But uh, that, you know, you can see, if you look at it, this, if you just looked at this, you, look, you might struggle to figure out where this started, right? The Pacific is gone, Hawaii, and Easter Island is in trouble. And then here's the kind of analysis then you can do, right? So you're seeing this thing spreading around. I mean, um, you know, it's, I mean, sometimes these things are definitely kind of a mystery. I mean, in, in, in uh, Europe, you, you have the Black Plague and so on, and um, it would be called the plague from the pre, you know, the most recently known place that it came from. Like, blame it on those guys, kind of, right? It's like Turkey or something, right? It's them, you know. But it came probably from, you know, some chicken poultry farm thing in um, uh, China, right? And so, you know, who, who are blamed by those guys? You know, so, uh, of course, now we have all this data. And as long as countries are good at saying how many people are sick, right? So SARS was a bit of a, a good example where China didn't really quite say how many people were sick. And so it was a little hard to tell. Um, so, you know, you need good reporting structures, uh, systems. So this is... This is orienting it at different places. So that's the idea here. And I'm not sure if you see, I needed to show the high resolution thing here. Okay, so this is, this one is starting at, um, uh, this example I thought was at 
Uh, not Atlanta. Is it Atlanta? I thought this was Atlanta. No, 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 it's not Atlanta. It's, um, yep, 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 yep. Is it Chag Chicago, right? OID is Chicago. No? It's Chicago, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a video that I'm going to, that's what I'm confused about. All right. So this is some time into the spread. And you look at, you know, who's getting it now. And you make up the uh, branching network for, for um, Chicago. And that's how, it, you know, how the spread is looking right now. So that gives you a suggestion that, yeah, it's, you know, it probably could have started there. Whereas if you oriented around, and I can't read these, if you oriented around these places, it's mu this, this is less feasible. So now you can build a statistical test. Uh, so again, you can see these kind of visually very much. It probably didn't come from Sydney, Mexico City. Um, this is Atlanta, I think. This is, is that Peking. Yeah, right. So it's the airport name, right? So Beijing. This circle here. This just oh. Um, Um, well, so uh, you want to put down here as best you can a representation of the distance from the, se from the originating airport. So, a dis so this is a real distance here. Mm -hmm. So you've taken the, uh, okay. yeah, it's, there's branching in there still, so it's not perfect, but it's a, um, right? So you start at Chicago and think of all of the ways to get to every other big city in the world, right? And exactly, there's only, and then let's, let's say there's a unique path to them. And that's going to be a branching, that network is going to have a branching structure, right? So you'll go from, I don't know, say to San Francisco and then to San Francisco perhaps and to also to Los Angeles and then that'll take you to you know, Australia and Asia. And, but there'll be a little fan out there and then there'll be other places to get to there. Right? So the whole thing is a big ball, but then you click on one of them and most of the links go away except for the links that emanate from that one. Yeah. Is that okay? So it becomes a branching network. So if it's a branching network and you've still everyone's connected, there are n nodes. How many edges? Well, so here's the let me let me see what I'm trying to say. So you've got the whole thing, a ton of edges, right? And you click on uh, Chicago. Right? And now the only edges left are the, these unique paths. So there's only one edge coming to each um, destination city now. And that's the, it's part of the shortest path from Chicago. So that's right. So it's M minus one. Because you're excluding your original one, there are M minus one other guys. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of those trick questions. Like, how many tennis matches do you need to reduce a field of 128? to produce a winner out of 128 in the, because it's another branching network, but the other way, right? Well, you need 127 losers. So, so that's it. So you're th sitting there thinking it's two, and then there's a four, and eight, and 16, 30. You can figure it out, right? So this, you know, and you have to do the little thing, you're adding one, and two, and four, right? Because there's one match, and two, and four, and eight. So you write out your little thing, you get a little geometric sum, and you're like, it's two to the n minus one. Because there's a two minus one on the bottom, you get it all sort of, and then the you know the idiot next to you is like 127. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? No, you have to figure it out. <laughs> Sneaky. All right, this is very clever. Yeah. Right. Now, of course, you know, quarantine. People react. This is a simulation. Different things. Okay. So just a branch. So branching just means um. Gosh, I'm a terrible person. Um, it's just, uh, there are no loops. Right? So if this is Chicago, everyone is fleeing Chicago. You could visualize it like that. Right? They want to leave. Um, depends how you feel about Chicago. Is that true? Is that true? Okay, all right, good. <laughs> I'm just giving you a different way to feel about it, if that <laughs> works. I don't know if that upsets you, you can just exclude it. This could be zombies coming out of here. It could be whatever it is. Um, yeah, so branching networks. So there are no, there are no, uh, no edges, no uh, loops. No <sighs> yeah, no triangles, no loops, no big loops. There could be big loops, right? You could, you know, have this, but in this, you know, the the requirement is just to make it a branching one. There could be two shortest paths, but 
but because we've got some little bit of, you know, you know, it's on the earth, there are distances, it, it, it should be okay. It should, you should be able to produce a unique, you know, if you say Chicago, it should be a unique thing. Like there shouldn't be two ways to get to Sydney that are exactly the same in length. Um, we'll do some, we'll, we'll look at this later on too when you might think about, um, okay, so you want to redistribute people, that's what this thing is for. This whole airline system is generally, re you know, moving people around. So they spend some time in airports, they spend time, so there's a cost of being in an airport, there's a cost of being on a plane. You could think of UPS and FedEx of having, you know, and, and the post having, there's a cost to the thing being moved around, the object being moved around in a center, and then being, you know, traveling on trucks. Those, depending on how much those two things cost, you'll structure your network very differently, right? So if it's, we'll, we'll come to that later on, but you might want a network where it's just everything is in Columbus, Ohio, and then you fly everywhere from that. Or you might want to have one very distributed kind of one. We have lots of centers and little trucks driving all over the place. It depends on that balance. Um, which, you know, these, these places of institutions or co corporations have figured out quite a lot. No? Is that okay? Maybe you guys need a shut up button. <laughs> you politely tweet to me. <laughs> Stop talking. Um, I'm actually paid to talk, so, um, all right, so, <coughs> that's an amazing coincidence, I like talking. Um, <laughs> sorry, I repeat things, repeater, okay. Okay, so the, here is a visualize, this is starting in Mexico City. Is that music? I turned that off, didn't I? Yeah. And everyone is gone. Let's do it again, it's kind of fun. So here's your directed network coming out of, uh, come on, yay. Wow, so weird. Well, I think, so I had, I think I just have to get the page again. Yep. Is it Adobe, my friend Adobe? No, this is Atlanta, sorry, this is Atlanta. Which, you know, has a few fun things stored in boxes somewhere that if they got out, would be bad, right? So this, this is, you know, this is CDC goes wrong, right? Um, so yeah, New Zealand got it, bought it again, but uh, my hilarious joke up here is Greenland is okay. This is a reference to Princess Bride, The Princess Bride, the movie. You must see it if you have not seen that. Um, you can click on that later. Unemployed in Greenland, where I found you, it's Andre the Giant, Andre the Giant. Have you seen this film? Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. He's getting into it. He's, up, he's upset. Um, um, anyway. This one is from Greece. Is it from Greece? No, this is Mexico City. Okay. It's just an, it's the same kind of thing. But you can see, yeah, it's all over for, uh, of course, where people live as well, right? But that was bad. That's my favorite bit of net speak, by the way. So much win. Yeah. It's usually used in a very genuine way. You know, someone puts up something funny and people are like, so much win. Sorry. Is this, is this swine flu or SARS? This is a simulation. Yeah. This is yeah. totally made up. So, that, so that, that, that's why it's so beautiful. Well um, no, but the, you know, the network is real. What's that? Yeah, so let me say something. There's a s there are two science papers came out trying to measure the um, sp how that thing spread. And we'll get to contagion later on. But one of them, you can't tell, but really there's some, this is the infection level, a lot of resurgence, and we talked about this in pox, right? I didn't quite say this, but one of the models that they fit basically was an exponential growth, and they fit one data point, basically. <laughs> As far as one I, I recall and understand, the other one was more complicated. It was about it was exactly the kind of thing you want to do, which is, you know, the the, uh, the, the moves between um, regions and so on, and right that it had that kind of more of this. <coughs> yeah, it's more complicated. The, the big problem there is we want to know what the so-called reproduction number is. Like, what's the if you've got it, what's the probability that you infect? You know, what, what's the expected number of people you infect? Yeah. Um, because we love reducing systems to one number, and it is a disaster. I mean, there are things like the effective temperature for weather. 
Just say what the temperature is and whether it's raining or not. You know, like that's a, like we you need to have and the humidity is that what's that? Reducing things to one thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, well, yes. Well, mm. <laughs> that could be used. That's interesting. The measurer, yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah, 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 yeah. It's interesting. Well, there's uh, the one that I often put up is, um, uh, you know, to measure is to know, yeah. which is a little strong. <laughs> and um, also, there's nothing. Um, this is Lord Kelvin. Uh, there's nothing left in physics. This is 1800s, but just to measure things more accurately. You know, smacked around a little bit by quantum, and then the chaos thing, disaster. You know, that's really bad. Okay, all right. So there's some fun stuff. Uh, here's a you know just to show you some more examples. Creative networks. So this is a really uh, great paper. This is Science again, 2005, uh, looking at the evolution of uh, networks that produced interesting things. So there, they had Broadway musicals, and the other three um, areas they were looking at were uh, academic areas. So I think astrophysics. Maybe something like um, you know, a couple of other fields. Um, and, and so you can see so people work together to produce something, and then maybe they keep working together, right? Or maybe they split up and so on. So you can track the way these groups evolve. Uh, you can see the same thing with bands, right? You can see it in actually video games, so like the big multiplayer games. You know, again, tons of data. You can see how people like, literally, of course, band together, and you need to have people with different skills. Corporations do it, right? You need to have uh, teams, right? Um, sports teams do it. You have specialists and so on. So you can see this sort of thing. It's good data. So they and they have an actual little mechanism for how these teams kind of. It was a tricky mechanism, but they have a mechanism. So that's uh, that's you know good fun things. All right, okay, good. Just some examples. Uh, so uh, this is the last piece uh, in network. So we had interaction ones, and then we have these relational ones. Um, which may have impact in or, or may not. Uh, this one probably does. Walmart, this is actually from a while ago. They must have more data. Uh, you know, one of the things that came out of this was that they figured out they needed to buy more um, Pop-Tarts when uh, hurricanes were coming because that's what people tended to buy. They probably bought shovels as well, but they also bought a lot of Pop-Tarts. So, um, you know, Walmart responded magnificently by simply delivering more Pop-Tarts before... <laughs> A disaster. Um, okay, so, yeah, right. You don't need to know why. You just put the pop tarts in. <laughs> uh, so, and as I said, ideas, how they're connected, all sorts of things. Um, you know, any kind of knowledge databases. Um, we've had uh, clever ways for kind of finding how, uh, for, for getting us to kind of label things. So Flickr is a good example for finding things that are similar. The web is, you know, laden with this, right? Uh, it's what made Google work early on. This is terrible on this screen, but I'll just leave it here. This is uh, science, right? So this is a, uh, uh, you know, this is not something that it's not something that so it's been imposed by anyone to say these sciences are connected to each other. This is uh, it's from PLS one. It's Bolin from a few years ago. You can get a better figure here, um, <laughs> but this is basically how people navigate around the. Uh, around journals and so on, so you can see what's really connected. So there's things like physical chemistry, organic chemistry, you know, child psychology is over here. Um, so you, you can see this, you know, it's not just a big blob. There's some structure here, right? Um, it's so awful to try and read that. Disappointing. What's the resolution on these things? It's like 800 or 600. That we could fix up. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, it does point to this. Uh, last statement. This is typically the case with a lot of networks, right? They are a bit of a mess. Uh, and as I said, structure detection is something we'll come to later on. Uh, that's a big deal. Um, there are kind of canned things that people use now. Essentially, it's gotten to that level. So you feed your network in and it will say, okay, there are four big units, wh which you couldn't see, right? It's this big mess. But you process it and relabel nodes and say, you know, these guys are kind of on the same team and these ones. And I'll, I'll say this again. So actually, next Thursday, I'm away. We'll have Kathy Bliss, who's a graduate student of ours, who's done a lot of good stuff on networks. She's gonna, one of the things she wants to present will be um, show you something with Gephi, for example, so how to use Gephi a little bit. So if you have laptops, you should bring laptops. Um, but I'll, I'll tweet about that. 
Um, Gephi has sort of become one of the best um, data, uh, network uh, visualization tools around. Right? There's a few competitors, but it, it does some good things. Um, so even when they look good, even if you think you've got it, this is my little joke, right? So it's a very graphic analogy, which aids understanding wonderfully well, being strictly speaking wrong in every possible way, which is a bit you know, true of some of the um, flat networks I've showed you. There's some messing around to make it look kind of pretty. Um, anyway, so we need to work hard to, to get out the essence of things. All right. Okay, so I'll come back to that because that's part one of the properties here. I'm going to kind of race through this stuff. Wow. Okay. Is it? Is that? Is that? Yes, we will talk about that. That clock is correct. Like I told it to be. Um, okay, so, you know, we think we have things like Fourier spectrum where we say, okay, we have, um, uh, you know, um, we can, you know, break a signal down and we can say this is the most important part and then this is the second most important part. Or, you know, here they, these, these things are all orthogonal to each other and we can build a signal out of them, right? Um, sine waves and cos co cosines, right? So we, that, that's a, you know, classic example of decomposing something into its vital pieces, right? And there are lots of ways to break things down depending on what they are. You know, images, uh, wavelets work well for images. So what do you do with networks? How do you break them into pieces? Can you do that? And it turns out to be, you know, there's some natural things you might try mathematically, like counting loops and all sorts of stuff. But when it comes to physical ones that actually do something, that behave, that exist in the real world, uh, these are generally the kind of features that we've come up with in the last 15 years as being important, and, and they're broad and so on. Um, and I could probably add some more and change things around. But degree distribution is number one, right? That's really the big deal. Okay, what is the... Um, um, tapestry of, of uh, you know, friendship numbers across this network. Then there's how they're connected together, right? Do all the ones with lots of friends connect to each other and so on? That's this sortativity piece. But first and foremost, this, this matters, right? Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll go through these. Um, and then there's, you know, this is, a, of course, a giant thing. I mean, how do, how do the networks actually evolve? How do they come about? How does the things happening on top of them uh, you know, operate as well? Anyway, so... All right, let's race through some of these. So degree distribution. So we'll write as P sub K. Um, K, again, is the no degree, number of connections. And so classic random networks, and I'll give you some things on this. I know we did a little bit on in POX. Um, this is a Poisson degree distribution. A Poisson distribution, sorry. Um, and again, average degree. If you want, you could call this Z if that helps make less of a mess here. This is average degree is, is sitting here. K factorial on the bottom. Uh, so this typically has this kind of form. I mean, po Poisson degree distributions, right? It's discrete, and I'm not showing that, but it's a, you know, there's, a, there's an average degree. The, the width of it is actually not very big. It's uh, average, the standard deviation grows like average degree as well. Well, variance grows like average degree, I should say. Get that. I'm being being a little glib there. Um, so it's a it's a, a thin it's a narrow network and uh, a narrow distribution. Uh, so there aren't you don't find nodes with lots of friends. Um, so this is if you take m uh, n nodes and you have m edges and you throw the edges down randomly, make that network and we'll talk about how to do that. You put in a box. And you do it again, and you put that one in a box, and you do it again, right? And there are lots of these, and we'll count up how many there are. You throw all of those in. It's not even worrying about weighting them, having weighted edges or anything. This is just pure edges, undirected. Put them in. And then you start, you, f you pull one out. It will have this degree distribution. It will be very, very close. There will be some in there where there's a node that's got, you know, mo everyone is pointing to that node, and then maybe it's got some other friends, like a really strong star network. There'll be something like that. There'll be ones that have power law size distribution. But there are so few of them, you will never find one rubbinging around, right? You will always get these guys. Um, but the universe does not ever produce these, right? Because they are not made, right? This is the thing that lives in mathematicians' heads. So you will this is a classic degree distribution. There's lots of good stuff, um, but it doesn't exist. So typically, you see these guys. There are different kinds, but typically, this is a, a very common one, so-called scale-free networks. Um, 
if you haven't taken parks, then we could we could talk about how to kind of see some of this, uh, in inject some of this material. Um, but it's k k to the minus gamma. This is a power law size distribution. It means it's like so. We talked about a lot of things like uh, earthquake distributions, uh, size distributions, um, wealth is at least heavy tailed, so called heavy tailed, might not exactly be power law. But it's uh, these are the statistics of surprise, right? You're sampling from them most of the time, depending on the thing, but most of the time you might find small things. Most of the time you have very small tremors that are undetectable, right? Now and then you have one that's much bigger, and very rarely you have one that's huge. And we, we encode this in language. We talk about the hundred year flood or the thousand year flood, like we have an idea of it. Um, but generally it's not it's not easy. This is a very hard thing to grasp, right? The 99%, 1% thing, that's exactly trying to encode this in natural language, but it's still, um, you know, that still doesn't work. Um, <coughs> but it's not bad. Uh, anyway, so these, these are the, you know, networks have this as well. So, um, you know, another good example is wealth, right? So if you pick a random person from the US, they're not going to have a lot of money. If you're very, very lucky, you're going to get Bill Gates, right? And it's a ridiculous amount of money, right? But if you're picking out people and then looking at their height, you never get someone who's 10,000 times as tall as the last one, right? You don't get, right? It's a very small, it's gentle, nice little boring distribution, right? Which is good. Um, that's fine. But yeah, some, some of these other things, and, and, and it turns out networks very much are in that category have these skews. <laughs> okay. Um, and the hubs, hubs are very interesting, right? So they can, f they can block things, they can make things spread, depends, right? I mean, if a, you know, JFK goes out, it's a, the whole you know, airline network on the East Coast gets into trouble really bad. Um, but as we saw, if you know, someone puts out a fantastic disease that no one knows they have in JFK, that's going to be really bad as well, right? So it depends on what's happening on the network. Uh, I've said this, so uh, these so-called Erdish so random, random networks are a mathematical thing. Uh, these scale-free ones come from, they're growing networks, they come from a plausible mechanism, rich gets richer. Um, so there's certainly randomness, tons of randomness in, in, in you know, everything we see, but uh, it's just not complete randomness, right? Okay. So fun things to play around with. You know, spend 50 years playing around with those guys, but um, okay. Assortativity and homophily are similar businesses. Uh, so this is to say that, all right, you've got your degrees and so on, but then there's some more things. So the nodes um, uh, that are connected to each other are connected to each other for reasons, right? So they match up in some way. So uh, degree, to go back to degree, degree is actually a nice uh, thing to explore. So it's the idea that well-connected nodes may be connected to other well-connected nodes or conversely, well to poorly connected. And there's some earlier work that has that that gets at that. But it, so it doesn't have to be a degree, of course. It could be age, it could be, you know, age, age of not a person necessarily, but a node, like how old an institution is. Um, you know, it could be, uh, you know, things that people like, whatever it is. All right. Uh, so in a s you talk about a, a network that's assortative if whatever measure of that you're talking about for these nodes, they have some little vector of things, and there's a little vector over here, and you correlate them in some way, or check how far apart they are. Uh, you talk about being, a, being assortative if um, like is connected to like. So that's the birds of a feather story. Um, and disassortative if it's going the other way. Right? So this is just uh, these are just very nice things to measure about your network. Right? It may be that it's purely random in this. It doesn't have this feature. And we'll look at how to you know, get at this. But the first thing you want to say, okay, the degree distribution is what it is. And then I want to see if there's anything on top of that that's not random. Okay, so uh, you know, this is some earlier work. This is Newman. These are uh, Mark Newman at Michigan. Uh, you often see this in social networks. Um, we could certainly add to this now, I think. But company directors, uh, co-authors in, in journal papers, actors in the so-called actor graph, which is a bit ridiculous, but it's the, um, you know, you take every movie, and if someone was in a movie with someone else, then they're connected. It's the Kevin Bacon game, right? Yeah. Um, <coughs> so we talked about that. We know about that. Uh, so these are often um, tech ones or biological ones uh, that are disassortative, right? So that they go up and down. So as you move across the landscape of the network, the nodes are quite somewhat dissimilar, right? Okay. So is that okay? Does that, I mean, it's just a very, I mean, I'm not doing anything quantitative with it, but conceptually, yeah. Okay. So that, that's the thing that matters. 
Uh, all right, I'll talk about clustering. And then I think we can escape. Um, so this is a very important, this is a good measure of socialness. People have looked at this um, you know, in, the, in the past, uh, different stages and different ways, but it really took off in this small world paper by Watson Strogatz, 98. Um, so your friends tend to know each other, right? So this uh, little guy here, A, has uh, these, these friends, and there are some connections between them, right? These two don't know each other and so on. Um, people are clever, so there might be good reasons for why they don't know each other, right? But um, anyway, this is a very common part of, network. so it's a, the opposite of a, not the opposite, but uh, as opposed to a branching network, right? So purely branching networks, your friends don't know each other. And that was a contrived branching network when we take the airlines, because we're just lighting up a particular part of what is a much, what is actually a network with clustering, but um, branching networks, uh, yeah, your friends don't know each other. So that's a very unsocial kind of network. So a uh, couple of measures, and we'll look at these a little bit. I I'll get through these slides. So one is to say, okay, let's uh, look at the neighborhood of A in this case, or node, node I, and we'll take every pair of friends, right? So we take B and C, and we check essentially to see if they are connected. And that's what this little quantity is here. It's the Ji um, J2 uh, element of the adjacency matrix. So if that has a 1 in it, you, you just put a 1. If it has a 0, you put a 0. So this is, a, this is a funny way of saying just count up how many of your the possible friendships in your friend circle exist. Right? And then this is divided by the total number of possible friendships, which is a this is a Ki choose 2. So this is a degree choose 2. Right? So this guy has 10 this character has 10 friends, then there are 10 choose two possible connections. That's a simple combinatorial thing, it's 10 times 9 divided by 2. Um, the number of triangles story down here, this is a, so this is, and then, sorry, this is a local measure, and then it's averaged over every node. So you're averaging over all the nodes. So if someone has a ton of friends, you just get one little clustering measure for them, and then it's averaged across everyone else. So the, the nodes with lots of friends tend to be downplayed a little bit here, right? Here they're not. Here they matter a lot because what we're going to say is let's take every triple um, and I'll come to these, but a triple is, is simply, right? There's a node here, node here, node here. That's it. And then the question is, is it closed or not? Right? So you count up all of the triples. It doesn't matter if they're closed or not. You just count up all the triples in the network. And uh, that goes in the bottom. And then you have three times the number of triangles. Because every triangle closes three triples. It clo this one closes this triple, right? This one closes this triple, and this one closes this triple. So this is the number of closed triples divided by the total number of triples. And that gives you the fraction of triples that are closed. So if it's one, it means that every possible, so every case where you say, oh, here's a node, it's got two friends, they're friends. That's true in every case. If it's zero, then that's never true. And so that's, so these numbers don't match up. This is a global measure. It's a, you're right, this is a global quantity and a global quantity. This is local, then average globally, different things. And they, but they have some similar feels. Okay, I'm going to tell you these things. I think we're running out of time. All right, so, okay, 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 okay. okay. You have to go. You're excited to leave. <laughs> All right, people. All right, so on Tuesday, we'll talk more through these things. There'll be more introduction. I'm Brent, what's that? Yeah, so I thought maybe we could have office hours straight after. Class. Yeah. What do you think of that? But they are also off on Wednesday, right? Yes. Yeah, so we'll have a portion now and then a portion on Wednesday. Well, are you allowed to now, however, I'm not going to be here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week. And so the, but the assignment is not due next week. It's due the week after. So everyone can Tomorrow. chill. Um, <laughs> it's like talking to my child. I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 You're trying to affect me with a particular step. Um, I will tweet you. Oh my god. Oh uh, yeah, sure, please. I, I might be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you people. Lots of fun. I know we're we're just building the engine up and we're going to do lots of fun things. Okay.